Thank you, Larry. So uh, I'll start. I'll, I'll just give you a little context of you know who we are, so you can understand as we're speaking. So uh, we're in Queens County, population 2.4 million people. We're the most diverse county of all the 3,000 in the nation. Uh, our patients speak over 130 languages, and our payer mix is essentially governmental funding or uninsured, self-paid people. So 60% of our patients are Medicaid, 20% Medicare, and about 10% uninsured, and the other 10% makes up the rest, like no fault, like this company. Very small private insurance. So we can take care of a underserved, uh, large immigrant population uh, with many social determinant needs. So that's what we are. Um, we have an ambulatory care network with 12 sites in the community, and East New York, Brooklyn, and Queens. Um, we lost our slides. So we have 20 sites, uh, 12 sites, I'm sorry, in East New York, Brooklyn, and Queens. Uh, the sites are all similar. Some are larger, some are smaller. Our, our model is primary care providers who the most part <coughs> are about half family physicians and about 25% internal medicine and 25% pediatrics. Um, and our payment model is such that a very huge percentage of our patients are in value-based payments. So um, we work with uh, contracts where we take full risk on about 180,000 lives. And out of that 180,000 lives, about 45,000 of them are within our ambulatory care network. So we know the primary health care system is in deep trouble right now. Can, can you click for me? Oh, like just the next slide. Yeah. We have a technological failure with us today. So, you know, using data to improve care, like, I, I honestly didn't believe in it before we did this, but <laughs> we are totally seeing the changes, you know, so. We're definitely shifting our mindset from one of, you know, chronic disease management to well care, health care, well care, and shifting the mind is to work smarter and not harder, and from being reactive to proactive. Next slide. So I think, you know, most people do know the importance of primary care, but what we're seeing as we're starting to go out in the world and educate is that many people do not. Next. So, we'll, we'll talk a lot about, you know, what is now emerging as the advanced primary care model. Uh, this is a slide from Dr. Wayne Jonas, uh, a friend of ours who's also consulting with us on developing innovative ways of, you know, trying to keep people healthy, but, you know, in the middle you kind of have the standard care, diagnosis, treatment, get paid, and then we have the whole quality measures that form around that. And, we know, you know, primary care and family medicine is great because of the comprehensiveness, the coordination of care, the continuous care that's given. And we like to want to see that we're enhancing that with chronic disease management. So we're working with navigators, we're working with care managers to actually go out to people's homes and make the changes that we're seeing. And the data is showing it. So uh, we're working hard on social determinants. There are things we have been able to do as far as food and housing for our, our underserved patients. So we made significant strides in that area. Next slide. So we know about, you can click, click and down, there's a bunch of So we know about that primary care is based on relationships. It's totally about the relationship between the provider and the patient. And, you know, data has clearly shown that continuity improves diagnostic accuracy, it improves care coordination, satisfaction, reduces ER visits, hospitalizations, uh, and we're seeing it. You can keep clicking a little bit. Uh, we're also seeing our quality measures go up. So, you know, no one hates measures more than me, but unfortunately, uh, gold stars from our insurance company, these work millions and millions of dollars to us at the end of the year. So like, you know, we're literally starting to drive to people's houses to you know, get fit testing done and things like that. So we're doing what we need because we need every dollar that we can get. So we know that you know, those that have a, a relationship with a primary care provider have higher quality of care, higher satisfaction, and lower cost. So certainly meeting the quintuple, quintuple aim. And our providers are happier coming to work now because 
They're actually seeing less patients, but making more of a difference in those patients. And they're actually seeing, you know, weights come down, blood pressures come down, A1Cs come down. Next. So we do think that primary care, you know, really is the answer to our healthcare system, and we'll talk more about that a little later today. Next. Um, the problem is many people, and this is one of our proactive things, and it says 43% of Americans do not, you know, have a have a primary care relationship. So we found that out by doing proactive care. So we actually went to our panels of patients, we ran Epic Records and says, okay, you know, these are the 60% of people that hadn't had a primary care visit, and we went and got them. And we went and got a huge percentage of those patients who hadn't had care in one, two, three years, and literally brought them in and got them in, into care. So we know it makes a difference by getting people into that area. Next. Um, we know that primary care improves health, uh, decreases health disparities, unequal treatment, and, and again, we're, we're seeing it in our patients over the last three years. You know, COVID, you know, decimated us. We were at the epicenter during COVID. Queens County was the first cases in New York, uh, and it was, it was hard. I mean, we essentially closed all of our clinics except two. We kept one open as a sick center and one open for the well that needed to be seen. Uh, and all of our doctors became hospitalists, including myself. Next slide. Um, so we certainly want to see a change in primary care and primary care and where we're going to go. Uh, we know there's workforce shortages. Uh, we know we need to increase the capacity that we have. And we know we need to increase funding. Only five to seven percent of the healthcare dollar goes to primary care. If we could simple, simply double that, we'll have double the funds to take care of people. And it's just, to me, such a waste that we're tracing chronic complex illness. You know, so I tell people in our hospital, for a poor hospital, we have the most advanced technology and cardiac intervention and neuro intervention. So we're a primary stroke center. You come into our hospital with stroke, they will save you. And a heart attack, they will save you. Uh, but we could be preventing all these things, and I think We've made a lot of progress in doing that with, you know, hard work on our part, administration buy-in, uh, and a consultant that actually, you know, gets primary care. We work, we, the state has so many consultants overseeing the work we do. We have KPMG and NAP, all these national consulting firms that are forced on us to manage the hospital's finances. And none of them have a clue about what primary care is. And their answer is, you know, decrease the time of the visits, see more patients in the clinic, you know, churn them through. And, you know, we're fighting that with converging health. So Gina will talk about the, what we've actually done. Okay, thank you, Dr. Roy. Um, so when I, when I first started getting electronic medical, when we started having our electronic medical records 10, 12 years ago, 2011, 2011 um, I was like, oh, this is great. I, don't have to handwrite all those prescriptions, and that's about all I thought about. I thought <laughs> long, it would prolong the time of documentation, then the, the state sort of click this box, click that box, you gotta do this, meaningful use, but and I was like, okay, I'm not being a doctor, I'm just being a clicker. Um, so I, like, electronic medical records stick. Um, and uh, then I started seeing things about it that I had never thought about, and this is where one of the things Leveraging data. We can get so much data uh, from our electronic medical records, and I think most, I'm going to say, physicians who don't have MBAs don't really know where to look. Um, and we met Dr. Connor, and he came in, and he had spoken to us about a risk score. And I was like, tell me more. And he was like, well, you know, we can sort of stratify our patients and sort of move our brief, uh, all of our, our resources in a way that we're going to be able to care for them all but not necessarily just care blindly, know who are our patients, proactively bring patients in, especially those high-risk patients. And this risk score that he developed had three components, an absolute health risk, quality of care receiving, and use of the healthcare system. So, when you can, so uh, obviously the absolute health score are pretty, pretty simple. What are the medical problems? How many pills are they taking? You know, where, what their demographics are? Are they in an underserved area where there's not a lot of providers? All these together made the absolute health risk. Then we had the quality of care receiving. 
pretty much how well are we doing what we as physicians should be doing for our patients. Are we getting them flu shots? Are we getting their cancer screening? Are we doing everything we need? And then the, and then the final component is use of the health system. So again, in a capitated system, the ideal would be, I see them in my office, I keep them well, they stay out of urgent centers, they stay out of uh, ERs, they stay out of hospitals, because that's where the expenses are gonna go. But the fact is, we often see patients that are our patients, but they have a specialist over there and another specialist there, and when they're sick, instead of coming into your office, they end up going to an urgent center. And in a capitated uh, system, that's money leaving our system and going somewhere. So that's one of the biggest problems for most, um, for most uh, providers because lots of times, as well as we have Epic, and it's great, but I will tell people the largest um, healthcare provider in the southern part of New York State is Northwell, and they do not use Epic. So there's no way to communicate or know what happens. The only one way for us to know what happens is by billing. Insurers know all this information. So what we do is, what we did was we, we uh, sort of we committed with our insurer, Health First, which is our largest insurance of, patient, uh, of capitated patients, and we asked them, will you give us the information that comes from outside of our network? The urgent center that what doesn't use Epic, you know, other hospitals, are, and get the information to understand where they're going, what they're doing, to build this risk score. And this is the risk score, and this is pretty much a scatter chart of our, um, of our patients in all, I think, 37,000 patients that we care for directly within our hospital, uh, their scores. And you can see it's been broken up into four quadrants. The right lower quadrant is, excuse me, the left lower quadrant is a low risk, low cost. This is the 25 year old person who has no medical problems. The upper one is the low risk, high cost. This is a woman who gets pregnant and now will have a short term expense and then move back down into the low risk cost. This is a person, an athlete that blows out their knee and needs physical therapy and surgery, an MBA, which we get a lot of at us that move up. But in a short period of time, most of them move back down. Then the, the right half are our high risk patients. The bottom right, you have the uh, pre diabetic sort of metabolic syndrome sort of person that, you know, right now is not spending a lot of money, may come two or three times a year to the doctor, but is not, is fairly well. They don't have any complaints, they'll come in. But those patients, unfortunately, will frequently move up to the upper quadrant, which is the high risk, high cost. That's the diet, that per per person I told you about, that now is in renal failure, that is having, is now going down to dialysis, um, is having, has had a stroke, a heart attack, and now the expenses become very big. So, the, so our objective really is to try to identify the patients in this area. These patients up at the top, we know. They come to the doctor's office a lot. But identifying those low patients, the patients that are lower down on the bottom, to, to capture them to start making changes in their lives to avoid that upward move. So just to show you again, uh, happy people, low risk, high cost, got into a car accident, a bunch of people don't really know what's happening, they're all blind, they're blinded, they, you know, they don't know what the future is showing them. You know, talk, talk about the amounts. It's, it's yes, amazing. so the, the other issue is that you see here right now is that if you take a look at the low risk, the cost uh, for per, per patient per year at our institution is $750. The up at the top obviously goes up much higher. It's about 19,700 uh, uh, per person. But with the big thing that I want to show you is on this side, the high risk, low cost, $1,800 per year per patient. But if they move up to the top, there is about, it goes up to 30,000 per patient. So every time we stop or prevent or slow the movement, the migration from the right that lower quadrant up, we're saving about $28,000 per patient. Make sure you do that for 500 patients, do the math. So it's definitely really important for us to do. So how do we use this data? Who do we engage? What do we do with those patients? In what order, what resources? So again, you know, a, a, a well-patient visit is a pretty quick visit for most providers. Okay. 
is. So uh, it's not a matrix. So we're trying to use the data to guide us on how we're managing our patients, how we're calling patients in, getting those patients who don't come in for six months but are in that low, uh, low cost but high risk category. So again, once again, this is the scatter chart, and our key really is to stop this migration from the right lower quadrant. Thanks. Okay. So yeah, we're using these analytics really to, to understand how we're going to manage this patient. So what did we do at our institution? First thing is we embedded a risk score in every patient's chart. So a provider can go into the chart and see their patient's risk score to better understand where they are. We moved away from a clinician-centered to a team-centered, optimizing the use of nurses, medical assistants, our navigators were taking on a, a real lion's share of the load, and our, uh, our care management team. And we've done proactive outreach. We're identifying high-risk patients and proactively scheduling these high-value visits, which are longer visits. We want to have at least one a year per, uh, per patient. And, we're, and even more important is, we're in Epic, for anyone who's using it, we're creating care plans. We're doing um, diagnosis-based documentation so that there is a care plan so that anyone can go in and look at the disease specifically or go to the, and, and see what's happening with that or go to the note and see the full amount. Uh, we have we've, uh, increased availability for same days to get the patients in. And this is what, so when we talk about that, and just a couple other things, is we're building more and more reports. We're building care gap reports, which are our health maintenance reports. We're working on making sure providers are capturing all ACC codes. ACC codes are extremely important in explaining to insurers what the RAF score is of your patient, which most of the time, especially in our Medicare patients, will increase uh, reimbursement because of the complexity of those patients. So this is what happened after year one. Um, that top score was pretty much prior to us implementing the migration from the right low quadrant to the right upper quadrant. We really just didn't do a lot, but this is what happened afterwards. So there, we, in this pet, we did a quarterly basis, the second quarter of last year to this year, we stopped comparatively about 300 people from migrating up. Calculate 300 times $28,000, that's a considerable savings on our and again, that was only one quarter, so we're hoping that this will transmit going further. What's really important is the following. Um, so, uh, are these three slides. So I'm gonna speak very much. This is our cancer screening. It's increased tremendously. Oops, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's the first one. The other one is a pre are receiving appropriate care. So our low-risk patients are getting it, and so and we're getting a lot of our high-risk patients. But the key one that I think everybody should look at is this is ER utilization. This is showing you how much we've decreased our ER utilization. So patients are not going to the emergency room. They're coming to their providers. It's dropped dramatically throughout the, depending on the period of time, because obviously during the, the winter, there was a lot more go, people going to the emergency room, and we dropped it tremendously in that four to six month period. Next slide. So really, the final couple of things is, what do we have to do? We have to continue making these changes and be proactive towards the approach of patients and make our leaders understand it is a proactive approach that's going to really combine two things, high quality, low cost. Next slide. Okay, changes. So again, we are the future. We are the, we, we, lots of times leadership feel like they want to fix the broken system. No, no guys, don't fix the broken system. Throw the broken system out and build a system that works because the old system didn't. And again, just trying to fix a broken system is like sort of putting a patch on a tire. Sooner or later, it's gonna pop off. Okay, right. And really understanding health risks, which is key to the, the management. And you know, and focusing on behavior changes. Our providers feel so much more engaged, so much more feeling like they're making an impact, and that just avalanches into more productivity on the part of the provider. That's what we have. So Larry said we have time for questions.